So, where are we? Are we starting a new video here? What's the I deal? haven't decided yet, to be honest. Yeah? Right, let's start one. You know what? Let's start a video. Welcome to Iceland, where it's the heart of winter, encoded in snow, and the subject of today's video, ice. Ice is something I've taken for granted. As a Canadian, ice is only fun for curling, hockey, and to put in whiskey. Otherwise, it's just kind of there. It's taken me until now to truly appreciate the beauty of ice. This video is dedicated to photographing ice. Majestic, beautiful, photo-worthy ice. And while it's dedicated to ice, it's sponsored by Squarespace. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace.com. Not only are there some incredible templates to help you make your website look ultra professional, but there are so many tools to help you build a strong online business. There's blogging tools, there's e-commerce integration, and there's even a way to create a members only section to your website. To get you started, head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for a 10% discount on your first purchase. Made it to uh, the Glacier Lagoon. This is the meeting point to head to Sapphire Ice Cave, which I'm super excited about. I'm also super excited about the fact that it's uh, January 30th and I don't really need gloves. I'm only wearing one layer of clothing. It's so warm and wind free right now. It's absolutely confusing. It's just incredible. Hopefully this continues. The Glacier Lagoon just looks unreal right now. Reflections, full of ice, blue skies, a little bit of wispy cloud, but uh, it's time to board one of the vehicles and head ice walking. What you doing, Greg? Filming a time-lapse for your channel, brah. What's happening, dude? Loading up the, the monster truck and we're gonna go crush some cars. We boarded a big wheeled Ford F4 billion and headed across the rocky landscape towards the ice. It's wild, but four years ago when I photographed an ice cave on this glacier, it was about a 15 minute walk from the parking lot. Now, it's a 15 minute drive past the parking lot, followed by a 30 minute walk. The glaciers are retreating so quickly here. And as much as I wish I could tell you about it in person, my mic is playing games on me. But you see that hole in the front of the glacier? That's the ice cave we're heading into. Okay, so we're in the cave and it is awesome. It is so blue. It's also busy. You have my group of 10 people and then there's another group of about 14 people. But uh, people tend to wander through pretty quick. So as long as you're patient, you can still get really cool photos. I've done two kind of hero shots, um, using myself and a participant as models, off in the distance and up here. They're kind of the classic cliche shots, but I still love them. And now I think I kind of want to try to get some details or something in the ice, but it's just so hard to capture. And I don't know how well you can see this. This is ice but it's so clear that it doesn't even look like ice. And you can see volcanic ash and volcanic rock in there. And it's just so hard to capture that on, on photo. It's just like floating rock. Somehow I'd love to get photos of this texture. I just don't know how to make that happen yet, but I'm gonna try to solve it. Totally off topic, but this is ice filmed on my Canon. And now Greg Sony. I always give Sony a hard time for its inability to capture the color blue right. And I get that it's a personal preference thing. Some people prefer punchy, true to life colors like Canon. Others like the cinematic Sony colors. But the ice wasn't teal or off green, it was blue. And yes, the Sony image is way cleaner, but its inability to do blue is actually one of the big things that stopped me from changing to Sony years ago. Anyways, back to ice. So photographing the details in here is insanely difficult. 
just because it's so clear. This is so clear that it doesn't look like you're taking pictures of anything except for distorted light. And in so many ways, that's kind of exactly what it is. It just looks like suspended dirt. And yeah, I'm struggling. I think I got one photo where the shapes and twists kind of look cool, very abstract. I don't think you would know what you were looking at, which is kind of cool. The other thing is ice caves are created by like rivers flowing through them or streams and usually you can't get close enough to the water. But in this cave there's actually a little mini waterfall running right at the front next to some really black ice. And I think I've got a frame there that's really really cool. That night, we received a Northern Lights alert and headed to the Glacier Lagoon. Unfortunately, a clear starry night quickly clouded over and we retreated home. When we woke up in the morning for sunrise, we awoke to this. So the weather's turned on us a little bit actually and I wasn't expecting this. The forecast was actually for a really nice sunrise and then overnight it changed and it's now really, really cloudy, a little bit windy and they say that there's a snowstorm on the way. I haven't decided if I want to take a photo this morning here on Diamond Beach with this moody sky, or if I kind of just want to wander around and enjoy things. So I'm going to wander around and enjoy things for a bit and see what happens. Like I said, I wasn't gonna photograph anything because the weather wasn't great. And then I pulled the camera out and just held it up at the sky and I realized even though there's not light, it's really moody. So I still think I'm gonna photograph some of this ice here in Iceland. The problem is it's really low tide and all the really nice ice is way up on the beach. So gotta wait a little bit for these waves to come up. There's an old saying in photography, if you're comfortable taking a photo, it's probably not going to be that good of a photo. This was not comfortable. I needed to power through sub-zero ice water, hopping over my gumboots and onto my feet for this photo. Was it worth it? It's in my boots. The good news is I got the shot. I'm just checking sharpness now. Oh, I can't tell if it's sharp because I'm too cold. It looks like it's sharp. It looks like I've got the movement the right way. A little bit of spray, a little bit of mood. This image is awesome. I can't believe I wasn't gonna take a photo when we came out here because this might be my favorite from the beach this week. So yeah, this is, uh, this is a pretty good moment. I'm so glad I got my camera out in the end. And I'm glad we managed to get some photos in right before the snow rolled through. Basically, as soon as we packed up, feathers of snow started fluttering down. Soon, we were in a near whiteout. But we rolled through the white towards Vic, and when we landed on its black sand beaches, it was a teasing of light and a smashing of wind and snow. This really could go either way. Unfortunately, it went the wrong way. We were absolutely blasted by blowing snow. And honestly, it got a bit scary. Greg and I stopped worrying about photos and started focusing on keeping our group safe. What's the rule? Never turn your back to the sea, especially in a whiteout. It's hard to see the swell of the sea in a whiteout. Still, I was really impressed with them. The conditions probably couldn't have been any worse, but here they were trying to get something in the middle of a nasty winter storm. At least it's not raining. Go time? Yeah, I don't know. Don't know. I thought there was more color than this. And in a break from the wind, I did actually manage to attempt an image myself. Oh, 
Okay, so uh, yeah, it's a bit of a struggle with the weather and with the wind and everything, but I'm trying to do something creative, which isn't usually my style, but I'm getting really low to the ground and I've kind of created layers where there's a snow layer, a black sand beach layer, a motion layer with the waves and then the sea stacks and then the sky. The sky is not great, so maybe it's a black and white image, who knows? But I'm going about a half second to get to motion in the sea, F-16, ISO 100. Eventually, we packed up and left. In the morning, we headed to the other side of the sea stacks and hoped the conditions would be a little easier on us. I was intent on trying something different here. I tend to get stuck on the same composition every single time I come to Vic. So I searched up, then I searched the cave, And eventually I plot myself on the beach, basically in the same spot I always plot myself here. Greg, let me know if I'm about to die by a wave, okay? If you guys ever come to this beach, be very careful. Even when the sea is way out there, out of nowhere, these sneaky sneaker waves can come in and literally people die here. So be very careful, don't turn your back to the sea like I'm doing, but Greg's watching for me. I love the 70 to 200 RF. I think it's the best lens ever. It's stubby, it's compact, and it just takes such crisp photos. I'm, uh, I've lined up a photo and actually already taken it. It's about a quarter second F11, vertical like this with the sea stacks in the background, and I was just waiting for the right bit of foam to come up in my foreground, and it just zigzags through the frame, and I love it. I think it's gonna be an awesome, photo to edit, even if there's no sky, even if we're getting snowed on. Now, I've flipped my camera around to the sea, and I'm trying to harness my inner Rachel Talibart, trying to do wave photography. It's something I've always struggled at, but it's something that's always fun to try. Again, I've got about a quarter second, and I'm just waiting for the right roll in the wave to get kind of an artistic painting-like photo, and... Yeah, apparently there's a snowstorm coming in 15 minutes, so we should probably finish these photos and get going. We left Vic in the snow and cruised past some of the same locations I've photographed so many times before. We slid our way past Skogafoss, Cellulandsfoss, Gulffoss, and eventually ended up in Thingolir National Park. Okay, we're at Thingolir National Park and I'm going to take what I think is my last photo of the trip. This is the last moment I need to wear my thermals. I'm getting sick of them and ready to head back to the warmth in Portugal. And not that I don't love it here, I love it here. I'm just ready for some sun. I have probably only taken 30 photos on this entire trip. Conditions have been good but not great and I've photographed it so much that I'm getting a little bit picky and trying to do things creatively. This waterfall is one of my favorites to photograph, actually. I just love it. So 
So here at this waterfall that starts with an OX and ends with a FOSS, I always kind of come to the same spot. You have like a viewing platform and then just off it, you can kind of stand in the river and get a slightly different angle of the falls. And I think this waterfall actually looks better from the platform with a wide angle. But for some reason, I always come down here and try to pick out details. I love it. This lens lends well to that. But if I'm being totally honest, I don't love any of these photos. It's just a little bit too white. But I'm not going to be hard on myself until I get home. I'll let you see the image right now. As for right now, I'm going to wrap up. We're heading back to Portugal. I'm calling this an episode. I think the next series is going to be, well, somewhere cold as well. I'll see you there. Peace.